Y a partir de este momento, Montgomery al día. Un programa presentado por el Condado de Montgomery con el objetivo de mantener a la población latina informada sobre todo lo que acontece en nuestro condado. Un espacio informativo para que usted obtenga acceso directo a los servicios de su gobierno local. Aquí da inicio. Montgomery al día. Queda con ustedes la presentadora de este programa y portavoz hispana del Condado de Montgomery, Lorna Virgilí. Así es, queridos amigos, muy buenas tardes y bienvenidos una vez más acá, Montgomery al Día, su programa oficial del gobierno del condado de Montgomery, galardonado a nivel nacional. Y como cada martes a las 12 de la tarde, pues acá su presentadora y portavoz hispana de este condado, Lorna Virgili. Muchísimas gracias por esa sintonía y le recordamos que esta transmisión está simultáneamente en la página de Facebook de Radio América. Puede escucharnos y vernos por ahí, al igual que compartirla. En el día de hoy tenemos un invitado muy especial. Se trata nada menos y nada más que de nuestro ejecutivo, Mark Elrich, quien va a estar acá esta tarde compartiendo con nosotros información sobre varias iniciativas, leyes y proyectos que se están llevando a cabo en este momento y en los próximos meses en nuestro condado de Montgomery. Buenas tardes, señor Ejecutivo. ¿Cómo está? Bien, Itche. <ríe> Muy bien, gracias. ¿Qué tal, ¿Qué tal el verano? ¿Cómo le va? <ríe> ¿Cómo está el summer going for you, señor? Um... <ríe> Going okay. It's been the weather's been miserable most of the time. Not today. Uh, le, le preguntaba cómo estaba y bueno nada me dice que el estado del tiempo ha estado un poco malito durante esta época. So let's get started on the topics. So we have a lot on the agenda for today. Uh, let's yeah. start about with the historic bill signing for the rent stabilization in Montgomery County. First and foremost, you signed this about eight days ago, to be specific. Right. Uh, what is the cap? What are the limits? And who will benefit from this? So I mean, this is going to benefit, you know, a lot of tenants in Montgomery County. Um, not everybody, unfortunately, because buildings that were built after 2000 um, will be phased in one year at a time. So next year, build, buildings built in 2001 will come under control, buildings phase the year after that, it becomes building in 2002. But buildings built 2000 or earlier are under rent stabilization. So that's one thing everybody should know. That's the older buildings in the county. And, let, me, let me go ahead and translate that real quick. Yeah, uh, el primer tema es la estabilización en el tema del alquiler. Hace ocho días que él firmó proyecto de ley que se convierte en la ley en el condado de Montgomery, estabilizar lo que son los incrementos y poner límites en el alquiler. Muchos inquilinos van a ser beneficiados. Esta es una ley que va a entrar por fases, por periodos, para aquellos edificios que se construyeron después del año 2000. Por ejemplo, el año próximo será edificios del 2001 en adelante, pero eh, definitivamente para los edificios que fueron construidos antes del año 2000. So this means that if I live on a building, Mr. Connie Executive, that was built in 1999, I will be benefited by rent. By rent you should be benefited. Right? Yes, you should be. It, mm -hmm. And the bill limits your automatic rent increase to no more than inflation plus 3%. So if inflation is 3%, you're limited to no more than 6%. If it's 2%, if inflation is 2%, the limit is 5%. If the inflation ever goes back down to 1%, the limit is 4%. Um, Entonces, como va a funcionar es, eh, va a ser los incrementos al alquiler, lo que es la tasa de inflación más un 3%. Por ejemplo, si la tasa de inflación un año es 3%, más 3%, 6 es el límite. Un año, digamos que es 2, más 3 es 5, y así sucesivamente. Go ahead, continue. I'm sorry to interrupt our internet translation. No, no, that's important. Landlords could get larger increases if their actual costs are higher than inflation. And historically, that's not been true for most landlords. And they can get higher increases if they do major capital improvements, like put on a roof. Okay. 
¿Cómo pudieran haber aumentos más elevados de este límite del 6%? Eh, pues obviamente si los costos relacionados con el mantenimiento de los edificios es más elevado que la inflación, eso no ha ocurrido en el pasado, o si van a ser arreglos de infraestructura dentro del complejo del edificio, eh, por ejemplo, como poner un techo nuevo. Eh, entonces ahí sí sería un poco más elevado eh, el aumento. Uh, the bill signing, anything you'd like to add uh, regarding this? Um, well, it's going it's to be important. It's the first time we've had mandatory restrictions on rent. And so people should um, have more stable rent increases, less subject to, you know, we've had many people tell us about 20, 30, 50, 100% rent increases. Um, this should take most of those rent increases away. And we're going to look at what happens with other properties to see whether uh, landlords are taking excessive rent increases on the units that were excluded from rent control. Eh, ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que por primera vez va a ser mandatorio lo que tiene que ver con los aumentos del alquiler en el condado de Montgomery. Esto debe pues, eh, producir alquileres un poco más estables. Eh, no necesariamente aumentos de un 20, 30, 50 y hasta 100% que se ha escuchado en el, pasa, en el pasado. Y vamos a ver qué pasa con esto, a ver si esto se extendería entonces a otro tipo de propiedades dentro del condado de Montgomery. Sir, the bill signing was um, an event that was really packed by your, supporters and advocates. Uh, describe how you felt that day and mention uh, some of the uh, volunteers and organizations and youth that were in attendance. We did see a lot yeah. of youth that were uh, participating during that event, bill signing, sir, um, here so, in this look, building right here. <laughs> look, I was really excited because I've been trying to get a bill passed since I was on the council, starting, you know, around probably 2008, 2009, and we were never able to get a bill passed in the other council. So this is just a really, you know, great bit of progress for everybody to be able to do this. Um, you know, CASA was involved, uh, Jews United for Justice, the labor unions of Montgomery County supported this. Um, AIM came out and supported the compromise. Uh, there's a lot of individuals, you know, religious leaders and uh, other folks who represent the Community Renters Alliance, you know, was a big help in getting this done. So it was a broad range of people who supported this and made it possible to actually pass it. Él le preguntó, ¿no? ¿Cómo se siente tras la aprobación por parte del Consejo y el llegar él a firmar esta medida? que se convierte en ley a Kanga, el condado de Montgomery, obviamente emocionado desde que era miembro del consejo por allá, por el año 2008, 2009, estaba tratando de lograr que se llevara a cabo esta medida. Nunca se pudo, ha habido progreso y muchas organizaciones y voluntarios han colaborado desde casa hasta Just United for Justice, sindicatos laborales, eh, líderes religiosos y también la organización Renters Alliance con un grupo de jóvenes estuvieron abogando precisamente para que se lograra esta nueva ley en el condado de Montgomery. When does it go in, um, in effect, Mr. County Executive? So it's going to take a little while. Mm -hmm. um, we, have to, we have to write the regulations, which we hope we can get done in the next 30 to 45 days. Then it has to be posted for 30 days which means it has to be available for public comment. So if we can get it over there in early September, then we can get, get it posted so that then the council can act on it, on the regulations in October. So theoretically, this could go in effect before the end of the year. We're trying to get it moving as quickly as possible because we want it in effect as soon as possible. Le preguntaba cuándo entra en vigor esta ley en nuestro condado de Montgomery. Se espera que las regulaciones estén escritas en los próximos 30, 45 días, que sean divulgadas al público para comentario público. Posteriormente, el Consejo debe pues, evaluar y, y aprobar y tomar medidas. Así que teóricamente antes del fin de año pudiera entrar en vigor esta ley, pero obviamente it could it be sometime in April, early spring next year, or, or do you think it's going to happen before the end of the year? I'm, I'm hoping we're, our, we're planning on getting it over to the council, you know, on the sooner side. 
Okay. <laughs> if they're in the sooner side, then this thing can get handled um, before we get into next year. That's our hope. Okay. Eh, pues espera poder enviar las regulaciones al Consejo lo antes posible, de manera que esto se aborde y que la ley entre en vigor posiblemente hasta principios de año. So what are some of the exemptions uh, to, to the law? Jurisdictions like uh, Rockville, Gaithersburg, they're not yeah, included, correct? Right? Rockville and Gaithersburg aren't included. They have to enact their own law or, or support this law. We have, um, I think Tacoma Park is covered. Because Tacoma Park already has rent stabilization, their law mm -hmm. is bigger than this law, so the, the tenants there um, continue to enjoy better protection, better protections than this law provides in general. So that's a positive thing, and uh, the exemptions I think are um, more than you know people who have more than one house. So if they're renting a house, they can do that. There's, but I think it's uh, limited beyond one unit. That I know that. Uh, um, there's the time, the time limit thing is a big deal, that if the units are less than 23 years old, they're not covered by this. And if units have other agreements that control rents, which is a good thing, because some of our other agreements are also better than this. So um, it's, Let me go the, the, exemption, the big exemption is the exclusion of units after 2000. La exención más grande que tiene esta ley es la exclusión de unidades que fueron construidas después del año 2000. Ciudades como Rockville y Gaithersburg, como son ciudades independientes, jurisdicciones separadas del condado, la ley no le aplica. La ciudad de Tacoma Park, pues ya ellos tienen su propia ley de estabilización de alquiler con mejores protecciones, de hecho, para los inquilinos y también pone límites para los propietarios de vivienda independiente, sobre todo si la unidad fue construida hace menos de 23 años. Así que hay varias excepciones a esta ley en particular, la cual eh, pues entrará en vigor en cuanto las, regalas, las regulaciones estén forjadas y aprobadas. Uh, Mr. County Executive, this was not an easy bill to get through County Council. <laughs> there were a couple of versions, there were a couple of versions of it. Um, there was uh, advocates, but there was also opposition. So um, seven council members finally supported it, and that's why it went through council. Um, do you want to make any special recognitions regarding this? Well, I mean, I think you know a number of people were key. I mean, I really appreciate uh, Sydney Katz, um, who originally had signed on with the other bill and supported this more reasonable version of the bill. I really do appreciate that. Um, you know, Kristen Mink, Will Jawando, Kate, and, La and Lorianne Sales had been there from the start trying to get the best bill. Natalie compromised um, on the bill she originally introduced and, you know, compromised with other people who supported the more aggressive bill. And we were able between, you know, the two of them or the two sides to get her and Sydney over with the others to gave them a majority to get this bill done. So I was really happy that everybody was able to work with everybody else to get us to the point we could get the bill done. It's a big este deal. Fue, este fue un proyecto de ley que fue aprobado en el Consejo por mayoría, aprecia al concejal Secret Katz por el apoyo a, a este proyecto de ley y también a otros concejales como Meng, Sales, Yowando y Fanny González que colaboraron para poder pasar este proyecto de ley. Uh, let's go ahead and transition from that to Vision Zero, pedestrian safety, uh, Mr. County Executive. Over 550 collisions involving pedestrians in the county uh, last year, unfortunately, roughly 19 fatalities. Um, new campaign, Vision Zero, utilizing La Abuelina. Yes. En la, comunidad, en la comunidad hispana ya conocemos a la abuelina por sus mensajes relacionados con la pandemia, con el COVID-19, y ahora ella se convierte en una vocera también de lo que es seguridad peatonal, visión cero. How do you hope she, la abuelina, continues to be an educator and motivator in our community? So I'm, I'm hoping that you know, she has the same effect as um, she did when we were using her for COVID. We know that um, 
you know, she was born out of focus groups where they actually went out and listened to people in the um, Hispanic community. And one thing they found was that uh, when the older women spoke up in the group, that the group tended to coalesce around the opinions of the older women. And so, <laughs> because they're seen as sensible. Las abuelas, people, las abuelas. Las abuelas, <laughs> yes. They're very respected. And because they were very respected, um, they had the ability to be persuasive to people. People thought about, um, you know, their what they what they brought to the table, and you know they they're trusted, which is really important. You know, people feel like these folks look out for the community. They're the ones that care most about us. They're the ones who advice whose advice we value. So we're hoping that we can build on this and use this character now. Um, to talk about pedestrian safety because the you know, Hispanic community is disproportionately being affected by this. And we're hoping that she can... Good. Okay, ¿cómo surge la abuelina? Pues la abuelina fue parte de unos grupos de estudios, lo que se llama en inglés focus groups, donde se dieron cuenta que cuando las uh, señoras adultas un poco mayor hablaban, pues todo el mundo lo escuchaba. Entonces, que eh, se dio a entender, ¿no? De que nosotros eh, culturalmente en nuestra comunidad tenemos tendencia a escuchar, respetar uh, y sentir confianza con las abuelitas dentro de, nuestras, eh, dentro de nuestros entornos. Tienden a ser más persuasivas y nosotros escuchamos sus consejos. Así es como surge la abuelina y entonces parte de lo que continúa haciendo el condado es utilizar este personaje de forma eh, persuasiva para traer mensajes educacionales en nuestro idioma a la población. Ahorita con el tema de la seguridad peatonal, ¿por qué? porque desafortunadamente estamos siendo impactados más desproporcionadamente en lo que son las colisiones de peatones automóviles en nuestro condado de Montgomery. How, uh, how will she be used during uh, the, the campaign? Is this going to be several weeks, uh, uh, a few months? Uh, and how is, how is she going to teach us how to navigate safely in Montgomery County? Um. But well, we're going to use the character basically to talk about pedestrian safety and um, how to do these things, how to nav navigate certain intersections, how to, you know, understand what the traffic laws are, what to expect from other cars so that, you know, that you're, you're in a very urban environment now. Cars are going to behave differently often than where you came from. And to be aware that you're in a very different driving situation here if you're a pedestrian. So hopefully that, you know, her voice will get people's attention. They'll listen to what she's saying. And, you know, our hope is, you know, this is not, I, I don't think um, improving pedestrian behavior is going to be a short-term thing. It's going to be a long-term thing. And so we're going to make this investment so we can get this voice out there for the long-term, not the short-term. La importancia, eh, el objetivo final es mejorar nuestro eh, comportamiento en cuanto a las leyes de tránsito. Este personaje pues, va a tener mensajes de cómo navegar las intersecciones, eh, entender las leyes de tránsito, eh, esperar, qué esperar dentro de este ambiente más urbano y despertar atención, obviamente, relacionado con todo lo que tiene que ver con seguridad peatonal. Let's uh, walk. Let's hope Abuelina works hard, yep. hard as she did during COVID. <laughs> I, I hope she does. Nada, que la abuelina le toca trabajar fuertemente como lo hizo en el COVID para traernos todos esos mensajes de seguridad a la población nuestra. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about fentanyl. Uh, you participated mm -hmm. in a community listening session in Wheaton um, just okay. a few weeks ago. Uh, what was your biggest takeaway from that session and talk a little bit about prevention. Um, once again, the most important message for the parents today. So um, one of my takeaways that it was that people aren't aware of what they're looking for. A lot of parents didn't feel like they know what it is they're looking for. What is the sign of, you know, signs of fentanyl abuse? So we talked about, um, you know, and we're, we're talking about how we improve our messaging on what to look for. So you'll see more of a description of my weekly message that focuses on what you should be looking for in terms of uh, 
is your child using or is your partner using because adults are doing this all too often themselves are, are what are the behaviors you look for what are the um uh how do you tell uh, what are the physical signs like there's a certain packaging it um, it often comes wrapped in a small package of aluminum foil does the use the aluminum foil to heat the drug and use the drug so if you see little packages of aluminum foil about the size of um not much uh smaller than my credit card um <laughs> folded over you know if you see something that's folded over um like this it's aluminum foil and about that size um, that may well be a package that had fentanyl in it. So, yeah, go ahead. Let me go ahead. Um, durante esta sesión, que él participó el Ejecutivo Mark Average para escuchar a nuestra comunidad hispanoparlante, eh, ¿qué fue no? lo que más le, le impresionó? Y nos dice que el darse cuenta que las personas necesitan más información para saber qué es lo que tienen que buscar para ver si alguien, ya sea sus hijos o su compañero, su pareja, está utilizando el fentanilo. Mejor mensaje, mejor comunicación y ver las señales físicas del comportamiento, algo tan simple como, por ejemplo, y nos hacía la demostración con su tarjeta, de una tarjeta que tenía ahí en su escritorio, eh, paquetitos de aluminio que se doblan. Si usted ve estos paquetitos así en su casa por alguna casualidad, eso puede ser un indicio, una señal de que alguien en su entorno está utilizando fentanilo. You heard many parents calling for some sort of... Um, a detox center facility, uh, a place for youth where they can take the children in order uh, to deal with, with addiction, especially, especially for low-income families. Um, is that doable in, in the county? What are the options? So, I mean, it's something we're working on. We're working with the state to get a treatment center here. We've been working with the community to try to get them to approve the county opening up a center for um, like a restoration center to get people into treatment so we can um, support them in getting off of fentanyl. But we're working as well with, you know, trying to do something with the state. I think we can do it. It's just going to be a matter of where it ends up. But it's a priority for us because if we don't do it, um, we, we just don't have the treatment facilities now. And they're not going to come about unless you make a, dis a conscious decision to put them here. So we're Like I said, looking at options, including doing it ourselves. Okay. En cuanto, en esa sesión en particular, algo que escuchó el ejecutivo por parte de los padres fue la necesidad de un centro de desintoxicación para la juventud y para las familias de bajos ingresos. Algo en lo que se está trabajando con el estado de Maryland. También, pues, está en planes de la creación de un centro de tratamiento en el condado de Montgomery, donde aún está pendiente algo que se le da eh, prioridad en, en esto y que el objetivo es lograr uno de estos centros en nuestro condado de Montgomery. Usted que nos escucha, si tiene a alguien en su familia que quizás usted sospeche que está utilizando fentanilo, por favor, puede llamar a nuestro centro de crisis al 240-777-4000 y ese es la, el puerto de entrada, la primera parada para que le guíen y le puedan otorgar información adicional. Let's talk real quick. We just have a few minutes left, Mr. County Executive. Uh, cannabis, marijuana, legalization yes. in the state. It was exactly a month ago. <laughs> Have you heard from any of our departments, HHS, NCPD, 311, uh, calls from 311, people complaining about odor, um, traffic stops from uh, police? Have you heard anything from our county agencies regarding any impact in the county? Um, not a lot, fortunately. You know, okay. new, um, we get some questions about, you know, when are the regular uh, dispensaries going to open up right now? It's limited to dispensaries that were doing medical marijuana before they're the first ones allowed to do personal use. Um, but we're still, you know, we're still waiting. There's an interest in 
understanding the rules on what can you eat in a restaurant while you know getting also marijuana and the answer is going to be no um, can you smoke marijuana in a restaurant the answer is going to be no same as with cigarettes um, you really can't smoke it on the street if you're on your property outdoors yes but if you're on public property the answer is going to be no um, so you know we'll have a series of reminders we'll try to make it clear that you know people really can't do this um we're not looking to arrest people or any of that other stuff but we are looking to modify people's behavior so they don't do it inappropriately and of course you know the police are going to be interested in enforcing the law to make sure that people aren't getting high and driving around so all those things will come into play okay let me go ahead let me go ahead and translate yeah. that le preguntaba que hace justo hoy, un mes, la legalización del cannabis, la marihuana, eh, le, acá en nuestro estado de Maryland, se han habido quejas, eh, quizás la policía, el 311, que ha escuchado, nos dice qué cantidad, pero que bueno, eh, muchas personas haciendo preguntas cuando van a abrir los dispensarios, que no son solamente eh, los que proveen eh, la venta de la medicinal, que fueron los que originalmente pueden vender eh, la marihuana regular. Muchas de las reglas y regulaciones se eh, preguntan sobre ¿puedo fumarla en un restaurante? La respuesta es no. Tampoco en la calle, no en propiedad pública. Entonces, el condado va a continuar eh, más adelante. Recordatorios, no se trata de arrestar, sino de modificar el comportamiento, pero el Departamento de la Policía continuará con lo que es el cumplimiento de la ley respecto a esta ley en nuestro estado de Maryland. So, we only have about three minutes left, Mr. County Executive. Today is not night out. You're going to head out and visit some communities today. And what's going to be your safe message to the county residents that you will encounter today. Hoy es la Noche Nacional contra el Crimen. Él va a estar visitando algunas comunidades. Su mensaje a las comunidades sobre cómo continuaremos abordando el crimen en el condado de Montgomery. Um, you know, our message is that we're here. You know, both the police and fire department are out. We're, we want to help. We're looking to strengthen ties With the communities, we want communities to view us as assets that people, you know, as a government that people can trust and, you know, be willing to use our county government to help, you know, protect your community. So that's that's the message we're going to put out there. We're here. We want to help you. Uh, we understand our job is to protect you. We want you to help us do the best job we can protecting you. En el día de hoy, cuando se vaya a participar en estos eventos comunitarios, el mensaje a la comunidad y a todos nosotros, estamos aquí, la policía, los bomberos, para fortalecer, apoyar a las comunidades. Somos un gobierno de confiar, que queremos proteger a las comunidades y queremos ayudarlos a que nos ayuden. <risa> <laughs> Ayudarlos sí. a que nos ayuden. About 30 seconds left, Mr. County Executive. Any last thoughts that you have today? We had a lot of uh, other topics to cover, but we didn't have time. <laughs> I did. It's hard doing things. I just hope every, you know people come out tonight and meet us in the different places around the county. I'm not going to be at all of them. Uh, there are far too many for us to get to in five hours. So, you know, I'll be at a number of them. Some in the East County, some up county, and probably ending up back down county. So we'll, we'll, we're out, we're available, and, you know, we want to see people. So come out and see us. And the fair is coming to Montgomery County. Oh, yes. maybe, we can talk, maybe we can do some reminders about that later. But the fair okay. is coming, and uh, there are great opportunities for people to enjoy themselves here. So have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you all again soon. Ok, y entonces para culminar, pues vengan a los eventos comunitarios. De hecho, la policía tiene planificado aproximadamente 29 de ellos a través de nuestro condado. El Ejecutivo va a participar en varios, zona este, norte y sur del condado de Montgomery. Lleguen y no se olviden que la Feria Agricultural del Condado de Montgomery pues ya viene una buena oportunidad para disfrutar en familia. Gracias, Mr. County Executive. Have a wonderful Gracias. evening. Thank you. Gracias, hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye. Bye. 
Y hasta aquí su espacio, Montgomery al Día. Gracias por su amable sintonía.